What's up guys? Uh, welcome to the first video of this series where we're going to be learning how to create a project in Zephyr using STM32. Now the goal of this series is to break things down in a simple manner so that the average or beginning embedded programmer can grasp it. So let's just jump in. Uh, we'll start with a high level overview of this project. Uh, here in the diagram you can see we have a few devices here. A main controller, a secondary controller, a BMS, and if you don't know what a BMS is, it stands for Battery Management System. Um, it's just basically a controller that manages lithium batteries. It's, it's really irrelevant to our, our project here. This is just what I decided to, to call it, um, but really it could be any device that allows you to read data from it. So don't think too hard about that. Um, and then, of course, a, a thermocouple temperature sensor. So the main controller will simply be reading data from both the BMS and the temperature sensor. The main controller will be communicating with the BMS with the Modbus RTU protocol over RS-45, and it's going to communicate with the temperature sensor via spy communication. After the main controller has read data from the devices, it's going to transfer that information out to the secondary controller via the CAN bus protocol. And that's really it. Let's go ahead and, and go a level deeper with this diagram. Uh, before I start, understand that if you're going to follow along and do this yourself, uh, you don't have to use the exact controllers that I do, but it will take you some extra effort when it comes to the setting everything up. But for my secondary controller, I'll be using an STM32F446RE dev board. And the main controller is an STM32 F303 Disco or Discovery dev board. Again, as long as the two controllers you're using will have serial, CAN, and SPI peripherals, then they'll work. Since these dev boards don't have RS-45 modules on them, uh, we have to use a separate serial to RS-45 converter shown here. And then you can see it here it goes to an RS-45 to USB converter. There's a USB stick here. The reason for this is because we're going to be mimicking the BMS device or, or whatever device you call it uh, with some software on our computer. And this software is going to act as the device. Um, it, it's basically just a Modbus server that we can customize how we want. For my thermocouple sensor, I'm using a MAX31855 module. And then, of course, we have the thermocouple itself, a type K, uh, that is going to plug into the MAX31855. For the CAN bus side of things, I actually did forget to draw in the CAN bus transceiver modules here. You'll need one on each end. Um, why do we need extra transceivers in here? It's because the dev boards, they usually come with a CAN controller on them that handles the framing and timing and whatnot, but they don't output the data in a way that's compatible with the, the physical CAN bus. So you need CAN transceivers. But we're going to save that part for last, so I would not worry about it too much right now. The portion of the project that we're going to be tackling first is the main controller communicating with a thermocouple module. Before we move on to the next video, let's go ahead and install Zephyr. I'll show you the way that I've been doing it. First, let's go to Google and search Zephyr getting started. Click this link and we're going to simply follow the directions uh, with a few, few minor modifications. For Windows users, uh, which is what I'm on, click here and you're going to do exactly what this says, install CMake. Python and the device tree compiler. Then you need to go ahead and install Chocolatey. Again, follow these directions and you'll be fine. I've already installed all that, so I'm not going to do that again. After you've done that, I would go and create a folder for the project. I'm going to create my project folder in this folder called Projects 2, and I'm going to name it Data Distribution Project. Then we're going to open a terminal as an administrator, even though it says here to do it as a regular user. Um, I might be crazy, but I'm pretty sure I have issues with installing dependencies at some point in this process if I don't. 
So open a terminal as an administrator and navigate to uh, your projects directory. <music> Now let's create a Python virtual environment. I create mine a little differently than they do though. Um, I just do python -m -v -e -n -v dot v -e -n -v. And then we need to activate that virtual environment with dot v -e -n -v slash scripts slash activate. You can see here our newly created virtual environment, and then this .venv in uh, round brackets means that we're currently active within our virtual environment. So anything we install with pip is going to be isolated to this folder, and it won't be a global install. Go ahead and do pip install west. Then after that, do west init with no Zephyr project in the command, like they have listed here, uh, that folder doesn't exist for us. We don't have to CD into Zephyr project because again, it doesn't exist for us in our project structure. So go ahead and do West update. And this one's going to take a little bit. Now let's do West Zephyr export. Then West packages pip dash dash install then install the Zephyr SDK I've already done that myself but just do it as it says here let's go ahead and open up this project now with VS code When you open the project, you should have this structure here. If you can build the Blinky sample, uh, then you know you did it right. So let's try it. Um, since we're in a new terminal, we need to activate the virtual environment again. Then I'm going to copy and paste this command and then modify it a little bit. The samples directory is located inside the Zephyr directory. So let me add that on here real quick. And then my board I'm using is the STM32 F303 Discovery. And I believe it's called STM32 F3 underscore disco, but let me double check that. Yeah, okay, here it is, STM 32F3 underscore disco. Press enter to run that. And here you can see it built successfully. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, next video, we're going to add more to our project structure, and then we're actually going to start working on our uh, first uh, part of the project, which is the spy sensor, uh, the thermocouple sensor, and, and, and getting the uh, main controller to read data from that. So, um, yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs>